Hey guys, and welcome to React Up and Running. This lesson is all about React.js, the world's most popular JavaScript library for building user interfaces. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a strong grasp of the fundamentals of React.js, including the best way to set up a project, best practices concerning designing and coding components, and more than enough knowledge to go off and start creating your own amazing React.js applications. I'm a strong believer in hands-on learning, so in this lesson, we're going to create a simple weather app together and learn the concepts as we go. Sound good? Stick around and let's do this. All right, guys, so before we get started, just a brief note on the intended target audience for this tutorial. First of all, you'll probably benefit the most out of this tutorial if you already have a basic knowledge of HTML and JavaScript. Maybe a little bit of CSS, but that's not too important. So this tutorial is geared towards beginners through intermediate level in React.js. So if you're new to React, this is great. Or if maybe you've used React a few times, you've used it on a project a year ago, or six months ago, or something like that, and you just want to refresh your course on the fundamentals and best practices of React, then this course is for you. All right, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so before we start coding, I just want to talk for a minute about what React is and what are the benefits of using React. First of all, React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. So what's the difference between a JavaScript library such as React and a JavaScript framework such as Angular? Well, a library is nothing more than a collection of functions and objects that you can use in your code. A framework, on the other hand, is a more heavy-handed structure that dictates your application architecture. So one of the great things about React is that it has a very small footprint, there's a minimal amount of boilerplate code or specific syntax that you need to learn, it's really just JavaScript. And because of this, React is arguably easier to learn than other frameworks. Also, unlike many frameworks, React is not all or nothing. It can be used across your entire application, but it can also be easily integrated in just parts of your application, if you so choose. Finally, React is a great skill to have if you're in the job market. It is one of the most sought after front end technologies today and there's a, definitely a higher demand than there is uh, available React.js developers. So it's a very good tool to have up your sleeve and a very valuable skill. All right, guys, so first of all, uh, just ensure that you have Node.js installed on your development machine. React.js uses Node Package Manager, which is a package management system that comes bundled with Node.js. So if you don't have Node.js, just head on over to nodejs.org and um, I would say to go ahead and download 10.15.0, which is the latest version as of uh, this recording. So you want to definitely make sure you have at least a version 6.2 installed. Um, otherwise, I'd just go ahead and download 10 uh, if you can. All right? All right, so the next thing I want to look at is Create React App. Now, Create React App is a tool provided by the Facebook team, the creators of React itself, um, that basically is a scaffolding tool that will bootstrap a Hello World React application for you. So it's a one-click install, and the great thing about this tool is that it is a huge time saver. So typically, configuring a um, modern build setup with things like Babel for JavaScript transpiling and Webpack for your build pipeline can be very time-consuming. So Create React App takes care of all this behind the scenes so that you can just basically open your application and start coding. All right, so the installation, if you look here under Quick Start, uses something called NPX. This is an NPM package runner that comes with NPM 5.2 or higher. So as long as you have NPM 5.2 or higher installed, you don't need to worry about installing uh, Create React App as you normally would, you know, doing an NPM install. You can just use this command straight away, which is what we'll do right now. So, all right, so go ahead and open up your favorite command line tool. I'm going to use git bash here, and let's try this out. So I'm going to, well, first of all, make sure that you've cd'd into the directory where you want your weather application to live, okay? And then I'm going to do npx create-react-app, and followed by the application name. So I'm just going to call mine weather app, all right? and hit enter. 
Okay, so it'll take a few seconds for the application to be generated, but uh, trust me, it's gonna be worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop and come back when it's done. All right, and our app is completed. So um, the first thing we wanna do here is let's CD into our application directory. So I'm gonna do CD weather app. Okay, now I'm in the application root. Um, what I can do now is just start up the application by typing npm run start. Okay, and give that a second to start up. All right, there we go. And uh, as you can see, it opened up a browser pointing to localhost 3000, which is the default port um, for a local React application. All right, and there is our Hello World React application. So um, wasn't that easy, just one click and it installed our application for us and we're already able to see it in the browser. All right, so let's go to our code editor and take a look at what we have in our application folder. Okay, so here's our weather app root folder. Underneath that, we've got node modules, which, you know, here's where all of our uh, package dependencies are gonna live, okay? Here's our public folder, and inside of here we have our index.html, which is the starting page for our application. Now if we pop open this file, um, first of all, I'm gonna get rid of the comments here. We don't need these. This is just a lot of bloat. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory stuff, so no comments needed here. Um, and as you, as you can see, this looks like a pretty typical run-of-the-mill HTML page, all right? Um, the one thing to notice is the, this div right here where we see id root. Okay, now React is gonna use this ID to insert the React application within this div, okay? So in our HTML page, our React application is actually gonna live in this div with ID root. All right, and to see how that happens, we can take a look at the index.js file. That's located in the source folder, which is the folder where all of our application code will live, including any new components that we create. All right, so let's pop open index.js for a second. And let's look at line seven here. So React DOM, this is the part of the React library that's involved with updating the DOM. So here we're saying React DOM and calling the render method on that object. And what this code is doing, you can probably see, it's just using vanilla JavaScript uh, document.getElementById, targeting that root ID, the div with the root ID, and inserting our root level app React component there, okay? Now, like I said, the app component is the root component, so all other components, including all new components that we create, will be nested under the app component. In other words, what this code is saying is, find the HTML element with ID root and insert our React application here. All right, there's one more thing I'd like to show you before we move on, so if you go ahead and reopen your command line interface, this is an important script to know when it becomes time to deploy your application to production, all right? So this is npm run build. Go ahead and try running this. Now what the build script is gonna do is it's gonna create a build folder under our application root. And that build folder is going to contain a production ready version of our code, an optimized production build. So if we look here, we can see that the build folder has appeared and I think it's still compiling because there should be um, a few other things in here, including a minified version of our JS and CSS files. There we go. So if we just expand the static folder um, and JS, we can just open any one of these and see our production ready code, okay? So when you are ready to deploy your application to production, you only need to deploy everything in the build folder, okay? All of the other files and folders here are strictly for development. All right, that concludes part one of the React up and running series. In part two, we'll be covering components, props, state, and lifecycle methods. So if you're interested in that, please join me and I'll see you in the next video.